Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today is Grade 6, Unit 6, Lesson 1, Practice Problems. Here is an equation, x plus 4 equals 17. In Part A, we're going to draw a tape diagram to represent the equation. Part B, which part of the diagram shows the quantity x? What about 4? What about 17? And then how does the diagram show that x plus 4 has the same value as 17? We first just draw a rectangle-ish thing here. We have x and we have 4 and then together they're going to be a total of 17. And so which part of the diagram represents the quantity x? That's this part here. What about 4? That's this part there. And what about 17? That's this part here. How does the diagram show that x plus 4 has the same value as 17? Well, basically the large rectangle has that 17, but then it's formed by two smaller rectangles that have the x plus the 4. Now, as we go on to the next question, Diego is trying to find the value of x in 5 times x equals 35. He draws this diagram but is not certain how to proceed. Complete the tape diagram so it represents the equation 5 times x equals 35. Well, one of the first things I would do is go, well, this thing all of it, when you multiply it together, is going to be 35. And then to find the value of x, all we're going to need to do, each of these five parts are equal. So if I take 35 and divide it by 5, I get 7. So x equals 7. You can visually hopefully see that where you have 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. 5 times 7 is 35, or 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 is also 35. But generally, you just divide by 5, you get the 7, and there's your solution. Then for each equation, draw a tape diagram and find the unknown value. x plus 9 equals 16. Well, this is our rectangle to start. We're going to have x plus a 9 and that's going to total together to be 16. Well, what do we have to uh, do to get there? If we take our 16 and subtract our 9, we get 7. Then we have 4 times x equals 28. That means 4 equal sections of x are going to be worth 28. So this time, if we take our 28 and divide it by 4, we're going to get 7. So x is 7 in both of these. Now on our next page, question 4, match each equation to one of the following, or I'm sorry, one of the two tape diagrams. We have x plus 3 equals 9. Well, I have an x with 3, and that's going to equal 9. So our little a on my screen here goes with big B. Three times x equals nine. Well, one, two, three x's equals nine. That's going to be a. Nine equals three times x. That's also a. Three plus x equals nine. That's b. Now, a little trickier. x equals nine minus three. Well, if I were to find this, I would x. I would need to take nine minus three, and that does get me the x. So that too is b. And then x equals 9 divided by 3. Why well, have these 9 divided into 3 equal parts to get 1x? So that's a. And g, think through this, you have 1, 2, 3x's equaling 9. That's also going to be a. Then, question 5. A shopper paid $2.52 for 4.5 pounds of potatoes, $7.75 for 2.5 pounds of broccoli and $2.45 for 2.5 pounds of pears. What is the unit price 
for each item she bought, show your reasoning. Now we'll use our calculator for this, but as a refresher, unit price is always our amount of money over, in this case, one pound, or one item, but this time it's one pound. And so if we start with our potatoes, or our potatoes, potato, potato, $2.52 over the four and a half pounds. When you divide this out, you get 56 cents per pound. And our next question, if $7.75 divided by two and a half pounds, and when you take your $7.75 and divide by two and a half, you get $3.10 per pound. And lastly, we have the $2.45 for two and a half pounds again of pears. Divide this and you get 98 cents for one pound. And so which one has the lower unit price was not asked. So that's just the unit price. Question six. A sports drink bottle contains 16 and 9 tenths fluid ounces. Andre drank 80% of the bottle. How many fluid ounces did Andre drink? Show your reasoning. We'll take our 16 and 9 tenths ounces and multiply it by 80%. But of course, that means we're going to take 16 and 9 tenths and multiply it by our decimal 0 0.80 or just 0 0.8, 80 hundredths, 8 tenths. And so now, if you were to take 16 and 9 tenths and multiply it by 8 tenths, one way of looking at this is going, all right, how about 169 and multiply it by 8? 8 times 9 is 72. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 7 is 55. 8 times 1 is 8, plus the 5 is 13. And now we had our 9 tenths in the tenths place. We had our 80% or 8 tenths in the tenths place. So that means we need to have an answer in the hundredths place. And so if we start with 1 hundredths, 1 tenths, and then our decimal point, we get 13 and 52 hundredths ounces. And so that's our solution, 13 and 52 hundredths ounces. Our last question now, question seven. The daily recommended allowance of calcium for a sixth grader is uh, 1,200 milligrams. One cup of milk has 25% of the recommended daily value of calcium. How many milligrams of calcium are in a cup of milk? If you get stuck, consider using a double number line. Let's just use the double number line to refresh ourselves. Here, halfway would be 50%. Our other would be 25% and 75%. And so now we ask ourselves, how can I get from 100 down to 25%? Well, that's dividing by four. So I can take my 1,200 and also divide by four. And once you do that, you get a solution of 300. To finish, it would be 600 and 900 to finish this number line. But the answer we're looking at here is 300 milligrams, since that represented that 25% of value that's found in one cup of milk. That is it for this grade six, unit six, lesson one practice problems review. Good luck.